Hello, hello everybody, this is TipTopMTG here today with another Magic the Gathering video. In today's video, I'm going to be playing some Historic on MTG Arena, and I'm going to be playing with a card called God Pharaoh's Gift and Gate to the Afterlife. This little two card combo allows me to use Gate to the Afterlife to go get God Pharaoh's Gift, and God Pharaoh's Gift is a very powerful yet expensive artifact that lets me resurrect things every turn for free, but they become token 4-4s. Four um, obviously, the Gate to the Afterlife requires me to fill my graveyard in order to cheat out God Pharaoh's Gift, and so the deck is basically milling myself, putting a bunch of huge creatures into the graveyard, and then using reanimator effects like God Pharaoh's Gift or, you know, um, other uh, reanimator spells to bring those cards back and get value that way. Uh, this is a really awesome deck, and if you want to see my deck list, you can see it in the description down below. Now, you can kind of throw in any big creatures you want. I have things like Vidlis and Ulamog in there, uh, but yeah, why don't we jump just right into the gameplay? Alright, so jumping into this first game, my hand looks pretty decent, although I decided to mulligan because having, you know, a God Pharaoh's Gift in your hand is really isn't great, because yes, you are going to get Gate to the Afterlife off, but then you're losing a card in your hand. This hand is meh, it is pretty expensive, but I, I have Mired Trident into Gate to, uh, to the Afterlife, which, by the way, Gate to the Afterlife on its own, which I don't think I talked about much, does so much. Um, first off, you're gaining life when your creatures die, um, and you are also drawing cards and discarding, which then lets helps you you fill your graveyard. So oftentimes I will just literally kill creatures to get the gate to the afterlife trigger. Think about it. My opponent just paid two mana to get rid of my 2-1, which then gained me a life and let me first off cycle through my deck to get the better cards, but also fill my graveyard. Um, there I was able to do this. Now, I do have a couple complaints. Gate to the Afterlife should probably show you how many creature cards are in your graveyard, similar to something that cares about the number of instants and sorceries. I shouldn't have to go keep clicking and be like, oh, I'm at 5 now. And I know I could probably think, oh, I'm at 5, now I'm at, you know, um, 10. But yeah, this game definitely turns out to be interesting. I, I have Scarab God in my hand, which means that I can kind of do the effect of God Pharaoh's Gift, but spending mana to do it. My opponent looks like they're playing a, you know, Veto, maybe the Uro kind of life gain deck. Um, I decide to play Scarab God just so that I can definitely block Vito and kill it, but he decides to exile it, which at this point sucks because I'm just trying to get Gate to the Afterlife to start going off, um, and it's looking pretty bad. Now, every time I pull a mill card, it's amazing because I have Unburial Rites. All it takes is pulling one Ulamog or Villas, and I'm probably going to win the game, but I keep getting kind of unlucky here. Um, but that's kind of the point the deck. The deck is one third, maybe not one third in these proportions, but part of it is Millers, part of it is things to be milled, and part of it is the Resurrectors. So Unburial Rites here is so good. Not only if you draw it, you get to do it twice, but also um, you can cast it from your graveyard. Now, here I'm concerned about counter spells, and, you know, I'm kind of expecting it. You know, he left all of his mana open. He knows I have Unburial Rites. Um, here I'm testing to see if he blocks. I don't think he will, but I'm testing just for Gate to the Afterlife. Um... I assume he's going to let it hit, but I also think maybe he'll just, you know, kill it and think that I'm just not going to do anything else. Um, I wish I would have waited to play Meyer Triton. That was a misplay on my part, but uh, my opponent is being very, very slow, so I'm speeding that up. Um, so yeah, my opponent, I th at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm being roped just because he sees Villas and I'm Burial Rites and he knows I'm going to revive it. Uh, so I'm being roped, which makes me think, oh, he doesn't have a counter spell. This is awesome news. Um, but it also is like, oh, I'm being roped. This sucks. But then, you know, obviously I get to deal damage to him and I play on Burial Rites. Now, at first, I, you know, he waits a second. I'm like, okay, maybe he had to just walk away from his computer. But no, he he was there. He just let the timer go out. And he Veraskas contempts my Villas, which really sucks. Um, and then he minus three and kills my board. Now, I am completely fine with that because at this point, he's letting me mill myself. Um, I was able to mill an Ulamog into there while I have unburial rights. Uh, and so what I'm able to do is I'm actually able to sack this, go get this, and then also revive Ulamog. And what I love about God Pharaoh's Gift is, yes, you can revive big things with cool effects, but you can also revive all your millers to mill yourself more. And now your millers become 4-4. Four four, so that 4-4 four four is no longer a downside, it's an upside. Um, now, I was a little worried playing Ulamog, as we've seen that he has a lot of Raska's Contempts. Um, and at this point, I'm starting to get a little impatient. I'm telling him to, to, to his go, and that seems to work. Now, he plays Uro, uh, you know, that draws him, ramps him, deals damage to me, does everything, and it's a cool little combo, but at this point, 
you know, I'm going to probably kill him with Ulamog Mill, um, although I do have to worry about milling myself. Um, I do get, you know, Meteor Golem, and I'm able to either kill uh, Vito or Oracle of Moldaya. And I decide, you know what, I'm going to kill Vito because Vito has the most chance to just, like, kill me out of nowhere. Oracle of Moldaya is nice value, but if he's going to be milling himself, I'm fine. Um, I also am very happy I chose that because Uro is up there, and I'm glad, you know, I was able to kill Vito there. Um... You know, I'm worried because he has no cards in hand, which is a really nice feeling. Um, I kind of have no cards in hand, but God Pharaoh's Gift kind of just turns my graveyard into my hand. So at this point, I have the card advantage thing, but he has Uro. And I'm, I'm doing some math. I'm like, okay, well, he's not dead. And then I pull this, and I'm like, ooh, wait, 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 let's do some math here. Nah, never mind, I'm just going to play it, and then I'm going to get out a creature. And you'll notice here, he has to block the 10-10, which means Uro is definitely going to die. Um, and I swing, swing with the 0-4 by accident, and I'm like, okay, is this enough? Aw, oh, no, he's left at one life, because whenever a creature he controls dies, um, he loses life. Now, he starts to gain life, and I'm like, wow, maybe he'll make a comeback, but then I pull Murder Shredder, and he would have been dead anyway. But, yeah, that's how the deck wants to function. It wants to revive things, dump things in the graveyard, all of that. Now, here, this hand is very weird. It's strategic planning, which oftentimes can be the right card. Now, I do get Stitcher Supplier, which is probably one of the best cards in the deck, just because it kind of just mills you six, um, and it we get two Unburial Rites, which is already, I mean, it's kind of, it tells our opponent what we're playing. Now, they're clearly playing White Life Gain. Um, here, I have to keep shocking in my lands, uh, just because I keep wanting to play a bunch of blue spells, but we have, or a bunch of spells, I should have, I don't know, we'll see, but I do get, uh, Stitcher Supplier, I mill some more cards into the graveyard, I don't attack here, which I think might have been a misplay, but they're playing life gain, I'm already really low on life, I'd rather force them to not be able to attack than get that one extra damage in, um, and, you know, because they could attack, but they'll lose their creature, and I want my creature to die. Here, I decide that I want to be guaranteed the land um, and that I can cast on burial rights from my graveyard so I decided to play another stitcher supplier and now I can block anyway um, also, if you didn't see, Villagers went into the graveyard, and I have on burial rights and a guaranteed fourth land. Um, of course, I would have to shock that in. But maybe I pull a basic or something. Uh, but yeah, I'll probably be able to just unburial rights. Now he plays Heliod, which or he gets Heliod to transform, which is a little unfortunate. But it does also mean he's probably going to attack, which means I can probably get the Death Trigger on Stitcher Supplier. So I do that just so I can draw some or mill some cards. I get Ulamog now, um, and so now I have to decide um, Ulamog or Villas. Now. I don't get the cash trigger on Ulamog, so I think Villas is probably the better bet here. Um, and I decided to not shock it in because I'm getting so low on life, um, which you may have say say you may have said was the wrong choice. But if Villas cares about me losing life, I should probably have enough life to do that and still be, make it a valuable thing. I have Meteor Golem in my hand, um, which means that I can deal with the Sajani's Pride Mate no matter how big it gets, which is nice. Um, uh, at this point, I'm looking, I'm like, okay, we can kill the, you know, the Heliod, or not kill the Heliod, get the thing dead, get to the afterlife, let me draw and discard, so I discard the Meteor Golem so I can revive it later. Um, I see another Meteor Golem, I decide to throw it on the bottom, and I flash back, or I flash back on Burial Rites, and I decide, ooh, I can get either Ulamog, Scarab God, Massacre Worm, or Villas. And I decide Villas, because they're going to swing, probably, uh, maybe, and if they do, I'm going to lose a bunch of life, and if they do that, I'd like to at least get something out of it, and that being a bunch of cards, maybe some things disc carded, and it's also just an 8-8, um, you may have said, ooh, Lamog was the better choice in case they can get their Johnny's Pride Mate up to being like a 9-9, but if they do, um, which, um, they don't get to, they get it up to an 8-8, I decide to just take 8, draw 8, and yeah, so then my hand's like, okay, or I'm looking at my hand, and it's, it's pretty good, I decide to sacrifice Gate to the Afterlife so that every turn I can start to get that value, um, and I decide to flash back, I decide to flash back Massacre Worm, and the reason for this is I can kill two of his creatures, which will hurt him, and then I get to bring back Meteor Golem to destroy a Johnny's Pride Mate, which will unturn Heliod into a creature. So now he has no creatures, and you may have said you wanted, I may have wanted to attack with Villas, but I wanted to leave him up as a blocker for Heliod, because all he needs is one more white, um, white devotion, and he's a, he's a basically a haster, um, 
And my hand is looking pretty good. I can pretty much remove anything. Now, I, that is getting very riskily low on life. But, I mean, Murderous Rider turns into destroy something, lose two life, draw two cards with Villas. Um, and the reason, by the way, that I decide to flashback M Massacre Worm, but keep... Um, but um, turn the Meteor Golem into a 4-4 is because in case I wanted to use Massacre Worm again, I like sacrifice it, bring it back with Godfarrow's Gift to give minus 4, minus 4. I just like having Massacre Worm around. Then I decide to take Ulamog, um, and I look at his library. If he was like 20, I would have just used Godfarrow's Gift so it could have haste. But um, I decide, hey, I can also bring out any of these cards. I bring out... Nezel Hall, I believe, which is just, I, there are so many better cards besides Nezel Hall, um, but I just, it was my big creature that I decided to throw in, I attack with everything, and at this, this is the point where I win, uh, so that's kind of how the deck wants to work, it kind of wants to just use your graveyard as an asset, and it's a very, very fun deck to build, and what I love about it is that you don't need to spend that many rare wild cards on it, um, you know, normally when a deck focuses around a rare, you kind of want to put four of that rare in there, but the thing with Godfair's Gift is that actually, you're never really casting the spell, yes, you can, but you're never really doing that, instead you're using Gate to the Afterlife to tutor for it, whether it's even in your graveyard. So it's awesome because you can just get four uncommons to then, and then only have one or two rares, and you can build this really awesome deck just using the biggest creatures you have. As you saw, I had Nezel Hall in there, which isn't even that great with Godfair's Gift, but it's just a big creature that, you know, um, draws me a couple cards, and it's just fun. Either way, guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button. Again, remember, my deck list will be in the description down below. Um, I hope you guys have been liking the little animations. I've been just having a little bit of fun with it. Uh, and I plan to do them in the future. They're just a little bit of fun I get to do and let me stretch some of my creative thoughts. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about those as well in the comments. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.